horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hooray! The Lone Ranger's nephew, Dan Reed, had been looking forward to meeting Gunpowder Jackson for some time. He had heard many stories from both the Lone Ranger and Tonto about the fiery, quick-tempered rancher who lived in the vicinity of Burkeville. He was therefore keenly disappointed when he saw a grave and on the headstone the name Joe Jackson. What? Well, that must be Gunpowder. That was his name. He leaped astride his horse. Steady, boy. Come on, Victor! Dan hurried back to the water hole beside which the masked man and Tonto had paused before starting the last lap of the... Oh, boy! What's the matter, Dan? <laughs> you came in as if someone were chasing you. Golly, we're too late. What do you think I saw over there beneath those cottonwoods? A grave marker? Well, yes, that's right. With Gunpowder Jackson's name on it. But how did you know? <laughs> we all put it there. What? You held? Yes. Sit down, Dan. The horses need a little rest. Yours especially before we shove on to Gunpowder's ranch. I'll tell you about the last time we went there and about the grave beneath the cottonwoods. But if Gunpowder's dead... You you wait, Dan. You hear a story. It uh, was while you were in school, Dan. Tonto and I knew Gunpowder in the vicinity. We stopped at their ranch house to fill our canteens and visit for a few minutes. The last time we went there... Kate Jackson came rushing out of the house before we had a chance to rein up. The poor woman seemed almost beside herself. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness you've come. Oh, sir. Oh, 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 Kate. Oh, 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 it's Joe. That hair triggered temper of his has got out of hand again. Uh, come on, where is he? Oh, what, what matter with him? Is he in the house? No. He lit out for town to find El Richie. Richie? I don't know him. He's a rancher nearby. I don't know what started the trouble, but Gunpowder came in raging mad, grabbed his guns and raced out the back door and hit the saddle, roaring like a wild man about what he'd do to El Richie. Mm, Gunpowder make plenty trouble going in town. We'll go there right away. Steady, big fella. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. Tonto and I got to town as quickly as Scout and Silver could carry us. 
There's no doubt about where Gunpowder Jackson is going. We could hear his voice booming from the cafe. Come on, cafe. Easy, Silver. Come on, fellow. You and your whole dog gone out. Oh, you're not big enough. Well, I'll show you. Close it at him. Come on, boy. I'll get you out of the way first. Let's see. Oh. Enough of that. A man. I'll get him. No, you don't. Come on, let's clean them all up. I'll get you, Joe, that masked man as well. Oh, no gun, please. That's a trick, and here's one to your chin. And another one to the same place. Oh, stop it, stop it. The enemy's supposed to be stopped. It is stopped right now. All of you, back up and quiet down. Put them guns down. If it's gunplay you want... If anyone wants gunplay, I'll accommodate them. But don't start it unless you really want it. Just let me finish, Al Ritchie. That cold cat... You're not going to finish anyone, Gunpowder. Now, get out of here. I'll meet you outside. Ritchie started this, and I aim to finish it. You get out, Gunpowder. Now, Tondo. Get out. Oh. The rest of you stay where you are. I won't forget the way you hit me, Gunpowder. I'll get you the last thing I ever do. Well, you just try it, Richie. I'm ready for you and your whole wolf back any time you want to come around and hide. Come on, have Get him on his horse, Toto, and start for his ranch. I'll join you there. I waited until Toto and Gunpowder had a good start. Be sure Al Rich and his friends wouldn't try to follow and renew the fight. But what started the fight? Why was Gunpowder so mad? I learned that when I joined him at his ranch house. <laughs> Gunpowder had a disposition that flared up in anger very quickly. But like most people of that type, he calmed down just as fast. By the time we reached his ranch, Kate had made him wash up and had given him a good scolding. Hutto and I had supper there, and we sat on the porch. I... I saw that Gunpowder was relaxed, so I asked him what started the trouble with Al Ritchie. Well, Ritchie wants my land. He's done everything to try and make me sell out to him at his price. Well, is it a fair price? Not by 50%. Why does he want your land, Gunpowder? I don't know. Old Cap tried a number of tricks to get it. His last was to try and make me out a cattle thief. Gunpowder's speaking the truth. Ritchie has made trouble for us, but... Oh, Gunpowder, that's no call for he, you to He's go asking for a shooting. He and his whole gang. His gang? And his ranch hand. He knew he couldn't make a sheriff believe I was a cow thief. Just did it to wrangle me. You suppose he wanted to get you into a fighting mood so he could kill you and call it self-defense? <gasps> well, well, doggone. I never thought of that. But it makes a heap of sense. He drew his gun. He did? Yes. He sure did, Kate. Might have plugged me if our mask friend hadn't busted in and took things over. Now you wait. So what is it, Tonto? Look over that way. All right. Some horsemen coming here. Yeah, I know who they are. One of the leads, Sheriff Beal. I'd recognize this Tyler riding even if there wasn't a full moon. Oh, dear. I wonder what he's coming for this time. Tonto, we'll step inside the house while the sheriff's here. Uh -huh. Now he needn't disappear. Lawmen are too curious about my mask. See the door partly open, Tonto. Uh -huh. Otto and I waited just inside the door. We could hear the sheriff and a couple of deputies rain up. And then the sheriff came up the stairs to the porch. Good evening, Mrs. Jackson. Well, I hope you didn't come with more cattle stealing charges that you can't back up. Nope. This time it's not cattle stealing. Oh, then it is something. All right, Sheriff, spill it. What lies has Richard been telling about me now? But she hasn't said a thing. Yeah. Maybe you're going to charge me with disturbing the peace, hmm? I wish it was something like that, Joe. Well, well what is it? Murder. What? Murder. What's that? Richie says I killed anyone. He's I've got to take Ian Gunpowder for the murder of Al Richie. Al Richie? Gunpowder? You didn't tell me. Why, that's a downright lie. You hit him on the chin, didn't you? Sure, I hit him on the chin. What there was of it? That sneaking worm never had much of a chin. I hit it twice, but I didn't even knock him horizontal. He was making big he-man talk when I left the place. A few minutes later, he dropped dead. Doc said it was because he had a bad heart. So hitting him is what caused it. So I've got to take you in. For a moment, we thought Gunpowder was going to fight. 
But he went with the sheriff peaceably, leaving Kate sobbing softly on the porch. There was little I could say to console Mrs. Jackson, but I did what I could. I always knew Gunpowder's awful temper would get him into trouble. Now it's come. Kate, there's a great difference in shooting a man and in punching him. Gunpowder probably didn't know that Richie had a bad heart. Uh, neither did anybody else. Oh, it's just gunpowder bad luck, that's what it is. How's that? Well, what else could you call it when a punch on the chin causes the death of a man who's one of the best bronco busters in this part of the country? Richie is? Yes. Well, at least he was. It's possible he was killed in some other way. Oh, what do you think so? We can try to find out. Come on, Toto. We'll go to town and see what we can learn. had died in the doctor's office and that the body was still there. I stayed out of sight while Toto went to learn more about the strange death. Then Toto joined me at the end of town a half an hour later. There are plenty of color in doctor's office. Oh, who was there, Toto? Well, me, see doctor and fellow from Box R Ranch. The Ritchie Ranch? That's right. Did you see Al Ritchie's body? Well, me see him from door. Feller not let me go inside. Did you talk to the doctor? Ah, send me hurry back here and hear plenty bad news. What is it, Toto? Box our cow hands talk a lynch party. You mean they're going to lynch gunpowder? That's right. When? Tonight. The sheriff wouldn't stand for that. The sheriff not able to stop him. Look over there, Toto. Are those the men you saw in the doctor's office? Ah, them same fella. Them talk a lynch party first. Then them bury Al Ritchie. You mean they're going to bury him tonight? That's right. Steady there, Silver. Uh, what we do? First, we're going to interfere with the necktie party. Come on, Steady. Uh, Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. got to the jail just ahead of the men from the box are. Sheriff Beale was locking the outside door when we reined up. He looked up when he heard us. Who's the wrong? Hey, there! Leave it in leather, Sheriff. Don't go for the gun or I'll go for mine. Mash! By a thunder, you... got to borrow your prisoner, Sheriff. You got to what? Take him away. There's a lynch mob coming this way. A likely story. You're just telling me that to bust him out of jail. I never knew gunpowder had outlaw pals. Don't draw. You can't. Oh. Sorry, I'm sorry, Sheriff. I don't want gunplay. <laughs> Here are the keys, Toto. Unlock that door. Uh -huh. I'll hold you as an accessory after the fact. You won't hold me for anything. Give me that gun. The box star men are coming down the road right now. Look at them. I see a crowd. Why do they want to hang a man if he's going to be found guilty? I don't know anything about here, that. Here, here, take this bullet. Look it over when you get home. Perhaps it will tell you I'm on the same side you are. A bullet? Yes, it's made of silver. Come out of there, gunpowder. We've got to get away before you're lynched. And what's this talk about lynch, Mark? There it is. Sheriff, you can tell them your prisoner escaped. But I Come on, you... gunpowder, you'll ride with me. Get going, Toto. Get him up. Oh. Hey, you took my gun. Big fella. Here it is, Sheriff. We'll meet again. One silver. <laughs> curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger, Tonto, and the masked man's 14-year-old nephew, Dan Reed, had paused to water their horses before starting the last few miles on the trip to the ranch of a friend known as Gunpowder Jackson. Dan Reed was curious about a nearby grave marker upon which he had seen the name of the masked man's friend. What happened after you and Tonto took Gunpowder out of jail so the lynch mob couldn't get him? Well, we made camp in those cottonwoods over there, pretty well concealed. We kept gunpowder out of the way while Tonto and I tried to find the answer to a number of questions. Al Ritchie's friends buried him at daybreak and then spread out to try to find gunpowder. Uh, you said Ritchie had wanted to buy gunpowder's ranch. Yes, he did. Why? That was one of the things we wanted to know. Several days went by, but we couldn't find the answer. I had to put on a disguise so I could move around town without being arrested by the sheriff for helping Gunpowder escape. I was at the Butterfield Station when the stage came in from the east. There uh, was a passenger on the stage, a man who was dressed like an Easterner. He stepped down, and the sheriff went up to meet him. Hi there, stranger. Welcome to Burkeville. You're the sheriff? I am. My name is Richie. My brother lives here. Richie? Yes. Your brother? What's the matter? Where could I find my brother? His name is Al. Mr. Richie, I, I'm sorry, but your brother's dead. Dead? Yes. Died a week ago. That is, well, I guess you might say he was killed. Who did it? Who killed him? Where is the man? We haven't found him. That is, we know who he is, but he escaped. He cleared out. Well, of all the incompetence... We got men scouring the country, Mr. Ritchie. We'll find him. Don't you worry about that. We have men watching his ranch in case he tries to go there to see his wife. Who is he? His name is Jackson. Joe Jackson. People call him Gunpowder. Jackson? Yeah, I might have guessed that. My brother mentioned him in some letters he wrote. Well, I'll square him. You won't do anything of the kind, Mr. Ritchie. The law will take care of Joe Jackson when we catch him. My brother had a ranch, didn't he? Yes. The first ranch north of town. Well, I'll go there right now. The foreman's been running things since, well, since a week ago. Hmm. I suppose my brother left a will. You'll have to see the lawyer about that. Oh, yes, of course. Are you the one that will inherit the outfit? Hmm. I suppose so. I'm the only relative. Yeah. You can leave your things right in the station if you want to walk to the ranch. Or you can go across the road to the livery stable and rent transportation. I'll go to the livery stable. Thanks, Sheriff. You're welcome. If you want any help in locating my brother's killer, just let me know. Right. I was near enough to hear the conversation. The sheriff watched the newcomer cross the road, then turned toward the Butterfield station. I stepped up to him. Yeah. Never knew Al Ritchie had a brother. Sheriff. Yeah? Oh, what is it, stranger? Someone gave you a silver bullet a week ago. Do you remember? Yeah. What about it? You've been looking for gunpowder ever since. That voice. Say, are you the one... I have a message for you from the man who gave you that silver bullet. It's about the man you want. You know where he is? By thunder, if you do, you'll take me there. Don't make any threats, Sheriff. I may decide to say nothing. Where's Gunpowder Jackson? There's a spring next to the trail about five miles south of town. I know the place. What about it? There's a cottonwood grove east of that spring... If you look around at the edge of that woods, you'll learn about gunpowder. What do you mean? You'll learn what I mean when you get there. But I tell That's you... That's all I can tell you, Sheriff. You may meet the masked man nearby, and he might tell you a few of the facts. Oh, that masked man. I've been mm -hmm. thinking about him. Well, I'll start right away, and I'll take some deputies along with me. If you want to learn details, you'd better ride alone. Oh, I see. I'll start right away, and I'll ride alone. <laughs> See, Dan, Tonto and I had learned enough about Al Ritchie to convince us he hadn't died of a heart attack. We wanted the manhunt ended so we'd have a better chance of learning the truth. That's why we prepared a grave marker. Uh, you and Tonto did that? Yes. That's why I went to town in a disguise to send the sheriff out here to see it. I hoped he'd believe Gunpowder had died from a wound he got during the jailbreak. It was uh, while I was in town that the stage came in and the man who called himself Tom Ritchie arrived. 
Suddenly I realized that we'd been working with the wrong idea. I told the sheriff to come here and he'd be met by the masked man. So I hurried to get here ahead of him, removed my disguise, and met him to discuss things. Well, then what happened? The sheriff took word back to town. What are we here for? Boys, we can call off the manhunt. Call it off? Why? No, you don't, Sheriff. What's the matter with you, Richie? I demand that you find that man and hang him for my brother's murder. If you want to hang him, you go out where I was and get him out of his grave. Grave? Someone must have winged him during the jailbreak. His mass pal probably buried him. Late that afternoon, while Kate was sitting on her front porch, uh, a man in eastern clothing rode up and dismounted. He introduced himself as Tom Ritchie, and after a few formalities, he got to the point of his visit. But, but Mr. Ritchie, this is hardly the time to talk business. After all, I, I just learned about Joe. Mrs. Jackson, I know exactly how you feel. You see, I too have lost one who's close to me. Oh, yes. Yes, of course you have. Yet life must go on. Yes, we must go on about our worldly affairs until we, too, are called. Gunpowder never wanted to sell this ranch. I know. My brother told me about his stubbornness. Mr. Richard. Oh, I meant nothing unkind. I simply wanted to say that your husband had the place as long as he lived. But now that you're alone, it's a lot for you to handle. Yeah, I suppose so. One thing poor Al wanted was to get this place to add to his own holdings. I, well, I'd like to get it for that reason. Sort of a tribute to my brother. Can you afford to buy it? Oh, yes. You see, Al told me I was his only heir. Oh, well, then you've seen Lawyer Hawks. Well, not yet. I have an appointment with him for this evening, as soon as I leave here. Then you can't close a deal until you get the cash? Oh, I'm prepared to close right now. I have money enough with me to bind the bargain... And I have an agreement all drawn up. Oh, I see. We can call in some men to witness the contract and have things all settled in no time. Kate accepted the offer and signed an agreement to turn over the ranch when the balance of the money was paid. When Richie left, I came out of the house. You heard everything? Yes, Kate. You did fine. Oh, I hope I did. I tried. I'm glad to know that Richie's going to see the lawyer this evening. Well, why? Because when he gets there, he'll find another man at Hawk's desk. You mean not Mr. Hawk? No. I'm going to take Hawk's place for the interview. Well, you're... You're not Mr. Hawks. He couldn't keep his appointment, Mr. Richie. I'm acting in his place. Oh, I... I see. Aren't you a stranger in town? How could you have known that? Well, I... My brother never mentioned a second lawyer. You came about your brother's will, didn't you? Yes. He wrote and told me he'd left one with you. Have you the letter? Well, no. No, I didn't bring it with me. Oh, have you any letters to establish your identity? No, I didn't expect I'd have to establish my identity. Well, perhaps it doesn't matter a great deal. If you'll show me the will and arrange to settle the estate now... Are you in immediate need of cash? Yes, I want to get possession of the Jackson Ranch. You've already made a deal with Mrs. Jackson? Yes. How much time have you? Very little. The sooner I get possession, the better I like it. The railroad may send a man here within a week. So you're going to sell to the railroad. How about the will? I have a paper in this drawer. It seems to be a will. My brother said he'd left one in this office. It doesn't mention Richie's brother. What's that? This is a will leaving everything to Dr. Tuttle. Tuttle? The date is just before Al Ritchie had his fight in the cafe. It, it's a forgery. It's witnessed. Joe Jackson is signed. Ah, dead man. That thing's worthless. It says a... here to cancel all previously dated documents. It's a plot. That scheming old crook can't get away with that. Perhaps you'd better discuss it with Mr. Hawks when he returns. The chances are he's in on the deal. I'll discuss with Doc Tuttle right now. Oh, 
Oh, Harry. You dirty double-crossing old goat. Uh, now, wait. Hold on. Uh... Don't use that name. Well, you... you think you could trick me out of my own money? Richie, what are you talking about? A will that leaves everything to you. Now, uh, hold on. I see uh... through your scheme. As soon as I left town for a few days, you and Hawks worked out a forged will. You likely planned to kill me. No, kill no. Kill me I... and put the blame on Gunpowder Jackson. You used Jackson's name as a witness because you thought he'd gotten away for good. When you heard that he was dead, you knew you couldn't blame him for the murder of Al's brother. Now, wait. Listen to me, Richie. I didn't scheme against you. Why should I? I'll get plenty when you get control of your cash again. And more when you sell the Jackson land to the railroad. Why, I've been with you from the start. Double crosser. But I'm not. Wasn't I the one that said you were dead when the scheme to kill Jackson fell through? Wasn't I the one that worked hand in glove with you? Richie, I'll tell the lawyer I don't want your cash. You don't need to. Uh, she'll be there. What? what the... Get your hands up. You too, Al, Richie. Uh, there, you crook. We was in the back room. Jackson. Yeah. You're not the only one to come back alive. Now show you. Oh, enough of that. Smashed. The same one. Take him, boys. Wrap up Al's arm. Throw him in jail. Uh, Sheriff, listen to me. Throw the dark in with him. No, no. Shut up, you lying old crook. To think that I ever trusted you to pass on life and death. But, uh, what the... It was a masked man's idea, Doc. We figured to stir things up and see what came to the surface. And if you're so curious about the new lawyer, he won't be seen around town no more. Hello there, Silver. We're moving right away. Gosh, I'm sure glad to hear that gunpowder isn't dead. Far from it, Dan. Uh, what about the railroad? The tracks went through his land, and he made a nice piece of money. Well, if he's alive... Why doesn't he come here and take down that headboard? He comes here, Dan, whenever he's inclined to lose his temper. He looks at the headboard, thinks how close he came to occupying a grave because he was hot-headed. He's a changed man now, but you'll see for yourself. Come on. Steady, Steady. Easy, big fella. One, two, Get on, one, big fella. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.